my name's Lindsay. I'm a self-taught watercolour artist. I've been painting for two years now. I'm also a mum to four children and now a dog. So every time I've had an opportunity to have a little bit of spare time, whether that be in the evening at nine o'clock when my kids are in bed or when my children are in school, I've used that opportunity to teach myself to paint. I also taught myself to paint during lockdown while my children were off school for six months. So today I'm excited to be sharing with you the things that I have done to improve my art and to help me learn more about watercolours and also to improve my watercolour paintings. At one point I was becoming quite frustrated and I almost packed it in but I really didn't want to do that. I loved watercolour painting so much and I knew that this was something that I really wanted to learn more about and I just wanted to get so good at it. And Honestly, I think since I've done these things, my art has improved massively. So I'm gonna share those with you today. One of the things that I did was to upgrade my paper. So I found so many lovely papers that were affordable. They were proper watercolor paper, but at the time I didn't know the difference between 100% cotton paper and wood pulp paper. And since I started using 100% cotton paper, I've seen a massive improvement in my watercolour paintings. I've also found myself wanting to paint more as well because I'm seeing better results. And also my paint works so much nicer on 100% cotton paper. So I can't recommend this enough. Honestly, if you watch a lot of watercolour artists, a lot of them will say the number one thing if you're going to upgrade is to be your paper because that is probably one of the most important things to have. My two favourite papers to use are Arches watercolour paper and this is cold press. So this one is £140. The size that I'm using at the moment is like an A4 size, so it's 9 by 12 inches. And I love this because it's really thick. It holds water on lots of layers really nicely. I also don't get lots of bleeding and the paint just seems to settle really nice onto this paper. I get some lovely vibrancy with this paper as well and I just love it, it is so gorgeous to work on. There's also another paper that I love and this is one of my favourites too and honestly I keep buying it because I love it so much and this is by Canson. I don't know how to say this, it's like Moulin du Roy, Moulin du Roy paper. Again, it's 100% cotton, it's £140 and it's 300 GSM, it's got 10 pieces of paper in this one and this one is a full size. I also love it so much that I'm using it in A3 size as well. And I'm doing a painting at the moment on this paper, so I'll show you that painting now. If you like this video, please give me a like. It helps my channel to grow. What that does is that tells YouTube that you enjoy this video and this is a good video. And then YouTube will push this video out to more people and then I'll get seen more. My channel will grow and then I will be able to make more content for you. Also subscribe to my channel if you want to learn more about watercolours because like I said I make lots of tips, hacks and also step by step tutorials. I'm following a tutorial by Louise de Massey so I'm going to show you that painting now. This is the painting that I started last night so can you see how gorgeous and vibrant those colours are and it just sits on the paper so evenly. I absolutely love this paper. I'll link it down below for you. I think out of the arches and this um, it's a close call because I really, really love this paper. I also upgraded my brushes. So when I first started painting as a beginner, I started with these paint brushes, which were by Winsor & Newton. They're Winsor & Newton Cotman. And honestly, I really love these. I still use these sometimes for lifting paints. They are lovely quality. There's nothing wrong with these, absolutely nothing. But they were a little bit too stiff for me. And also, I needed a better shaped brush as well. So I decided to upgrade my brushes to these silver black velvet brushes and honestly these have been raved about on YouTube. I see a lot of YouTube, YouTube artists using these brushes so that's why I purchased them and I literally love them. I've got a few different brands of brushes and these are my absolute favourite. They're a mix between squirrel and synthetic I believe but can you see how much snap that brush has got? They always bounce back to their original shape and what I love about these is they've got a really fine pointed tip to them. So this is a pointed round brush. This one is a size 10. I've also got a size 6. I've got a size 12 
um, I use this quite a lot as well, the size 12. And I also use a script brush. So this is a size 8 as well. And I do use this sometimes, not that much. So these are my three most used brushes out of every brushes that I've got. I absolutely love them. The results that I get with my paintings using these brushes has been outstanding. Some people might argue with this, but I think that Good quality brushes are an absolute must and they do make a massive difference to your painting, um, to your paintings and how you can paint because if you've got a paintbrush that just doesn't have a nice shape to it, you're not going to get a nice result to be honest and I've noticed that if I swap to some of my other brushes that are not completely round tipped like this, I do struggle to get into some fine corners and I do paint outside the edges and things like that by accident so I do see a massive difference since using those. Some other brushes that I've got and I love are by Da Vinci. So these ones, uh, this one is a size 12 Casaneo and this one is a Cosmo Top and this one is my favourite, the Cosmo Top I prefer out of the Casaneo because you can see that the Casaneo is quite a big fluffy brush and the Cosmo Top actually holds its shape a bit better but I love both of these, they are gorgeous quality. I use the Casaneo a lot for getting washes or uh, painting on clean water and stuff like that. It's lovely for that. I've also got some of these Princeton Neptune brushes. So if you're on a budget, I would definitely recommend these. They are lovely quality. They are pointed round brushes, so they've still got a fine tip. And yeah, I love these. I will link them down below for you. So I've got a size 6, a size 4, and I've also got a size 8 somewhere. I can't find it. I don't know what I've done with that. I've also seen a huge difference in my paintings since I upgraded my paints. So I started off with Winsor & Newton, just Winsor & Newton um, original brand watercolour pans. I'll show you the pan set that I started off with. And I bought these, th I bought this from a stationery shop. So it was the first ever watercolour set that I've ever had um, and I loved it, honestly you can see how much I've used it so I literally loved it so much and I'm going to keep this because sometimes I think if I want to practice or my little girls want to paint they can use this but I, I just like the fact that this was my first ever set so it kind of means a lot to me. Then I upgraded to Winsor & Newton Cotman pan sets. This is a 45 pan set that I got from Amazon and I literally loved it and I saw a massive difference in the paint quality as well. Straight away I could see that it was just more pigmented, it flowed better on the page and the range of colours that you get in this set is amazing. There's a huge selection of colours in this set and I still use it to this, this day because the quality on these paints are beautiful. So if you're on a budget I would definitely recommend these paints. And I got well over a year of painting. I've been painting for two years now and I still use these and they are still going strong. Some of the colours I've had to replace because I used them more than others. But they have lasted me such a long time. And now I've upgraded to watercolour tubes. And these are my absolute favourite. Now they can be a little bit pricey. It depends on what brand you use. I use Winsor & Newton Cotman, but I also use Daniel Smith. And Daniel Smith is something that I've um, has been a recent purchase for me. The 15ml tubes are between 12 and 16 pounds, something like that. But they last a really long time. You just need a tiny little smidge. And like this one is one of my favourite colours and I've used it on quite a few paintings and you can see I've literally used the tiniest little smidge, there's still loads left in that. These Winsor & Newton Cotman colours are not too badly priced. I pay between £2.50 to about £4 for each colour. So you literally can't go wrong, I've got loads of these colours here and like I said, a little goes a long way. There are some colours in here that I use more than others like my Burnt Sienna I, I've had to replace and also my Indigo and now I'm running out of Lemon Yellow. I really need my Lemon Yellow. Oh no, I've just found another one. Oh yay, I thought it had all, all gone. I didn't know I had an extra tube so that's made my day. I've definitely seen a huge improvement in my paintings since I upgraded my paints. 
I think it does make a massive difference what paint you use. If you can only afford student quality paints, then that is completely fine. I would rather you get student quality paints than not paint at all. But then if you can save up and upgrade your supplies, then these are some of the supplies that I definitely recommend. Like I said, some of them can be a little bit pricey, some of them can be quite affordable, so I'll link some of them down below for you. Something else that's helped me to improve massively is to learn colour theory. These are two books that were hugely recommended, and honestly, I would definitely recommend them. So this one got recommended to me by a artist called Louise, and I'll link her channel down below for you. She's got a lovely channel. Her, this one is Coloured Choices, and this one is by Stephen Quiller. It's a lovely book and it explains colour theory in depth. It's got plenty of easy to read text. I love anything visual, so I like all the visuals in this book. It explains earth colours, complementary colours, primary colours, tertiary colours, and all those type of things that you need to know really. I love that it's got full page examples of real paintings as well. So it's got lots of examples of paintings. It teaches you a lot and I really do love this. I haven't read the whole thing but I've read most of this book and I really enjoy it. It's a gorgeous book and it's taught me loads. I also found this on Amazon and it was hugely recommended in the comments. So this is by Nita Leland, I think that's how you say it. It's called Exploring Colour Workshop and it's got exercises, lessons and demonstrations in this book. And this is amazing for a beginner. So I love the fact that it starts from the very beginning. It, show, it shows you all the primaries and secondaries and tertiary colours. It also shows you um, complementary colours. It's got a full glossary of terms as well for you to learn, for instance, temperature, staining colours, uh, split primaries, it's got tone, it's got all those type of words, triad, value, wet blending, some of these I don't even know myself, so it's been lovely to actually learn them. This is just my bookmark because this is the page I've got to, but this one actually has a full a temperature wheel so it's got a full wheel of colours. It's got pages where it talks about granulating colours, staining colours, tinting, um, all sorts of things in this. I love the fact that it's got little exercises that you can do. I found that before I started learning colour theory I was just picking up any colour in my palette. I wasn't even thinking about it, I was just thinking I'll just take that colour, I'll take that colour, ooh I like that colour, I'll Put that down and to be honest I was using so many colours that I was really muddying up my paintings and sometimes if you use too many colours that really don't match within a painting it can look a little bit odd and it can be quite hard to look at it as well. I love bright colours so I was using too many bright colours in one painting and some of those colours just didn't match, they were overwhelming each other and so now I've learned that by using some dull colours in my paintings and then maybe one or two bright colours that that actually makes those bright colours really pop off the page so it is important to learn colour theory I think in my eyes this has definitely helped me a lot it's also helped me to learn how to use a limited palette so a limited palette is by using one or two or three or four just very limited colours I've got a little friend who's come to join you know <laughs> my teenage son just said she's tired and she needs some attention and he needed to do something so ah, hello she's really tired <laughs> <laughs> um, another thing that I've noticed made a massive difference with my watercolour paintings is to actually study my subject before I even start. Instead of just grabbing my paints and putting the paints wherever I feel like it and not even thinking about it, now I really have a good look at my subject and figure out where the highlights are and where the darks are as well and then I can get a good idea of the mid-tones and just know before I start what colours I'm going to use and Hey, little lady, she's biting me and she's falling off my lap. Hey, she's a little puppy, so she's in a biting mood, isn't you, sweetie? Hey, you're gonna be a good girl. Oh, oh thank you. She's giving me kisses now. It also gives me a good idea of what colours I might want to use. So I do pre-mix my colours before I start. That's another tip for you. I would definitely recommend pre-mixing your colours instead of just wetting the paper and then not even thinking about what colours you're going to use and just picking up randomly any colours that you've got in your palette. I would do some colour swatches on some scrap paper. 
So we'll have a little think about what colours you're going to use and pre-mix them. Another thing that I found made a massive difference to my paintings was to tape my painting down flat. It's always recommended to stretch your paper ahead of time but I don't really have lots of time and lots of space to stretch my paper and let it dry so I do tape my paintings down. I use two different masking tapes which I'll link down below for you and I love them. So I do find that as long as I'm not adding loads of washes of water and making the paper super wet then it does keep my painting lovely and flat. You can see how flat that is now. So what I do is I use these boards, I will link them, I got them from an art shop and I'll link where I got these from. These are like gator foam boards or like lit, like foam inner boards, which I love and they're very inexpensive. This one is over A3 size, so I can put my A3 paintings on there. I've also got smaller ones which I use for my A4 size paintings. And what I find then is that I can swap and change between the paintings. So because they're taped down flat and I'm using a few different boards, I can flit in between the paintings and allow one layer to dry and go to my next painting. And if I'm a little bit bored of working on a painting as well, I can leave it and then come back to it at another time. So I really like these boards. So if you haven't got time to stretch your paper or you don't want to tape your paper down, you could always use an art block. So these are the main things that have helped me to improve my watercolour paintings and I would definitely recommend trying some of them. If you've got any tips for me, please comment in the comments box below. I'm always looking to learn new things and I'm definitely still improving my watercolour paintings and my watercolour journey. So I would love to hear from you. Have a lovely rest of your day. Happy painting and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.